Kevin. All right, China says it will implement sanctions against North Korea in early September. They include blocking a billion dollars worth of goods. That includes coal, iron ore, and other items. But is this enough? Are we going far enough? Claudia Rossett is the Foreign Policy Fellow at the Women's Independent Forum, and she joins me now. Claudia, good to see it. In your view, isn't there more we can do? No, there's a lot more we can do, and China's agreeing to go along with sanctions is not enough. Um, look, China has approved every UN sanctions resolution on North Korea, seven of them in the past 11 years, since 2006, and China has not enforced them. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a great deal more from China this time. They may enforce them briefly but these sanctions tend to erode. The record is terrible. The instrument is blunt. It's going to take more. I think what it's going to take is delegitimizing the North Korean regime, trying to bring it down without a hot war. But Trish, but, otherwise, but we need China to help China. In, in doing that. I mean, isn't that the reality yeah. of it, Claudia? We talk about a billion dollars no. worth of sanctions. You're talking about a 28 billion estimated 28 billion dollar economy. I don't know what good a billion dollars worth of sanctions is actually going <laughs> to do, especially if it's not enforced. Yeah, and look, this, North Korea is not a place where the ruler is concerned about the welfare of his people. All he needs is the materials to keep himself going, his missile program, and his military. And uh, the the problem is, even if China helps to bring North Korea to the bargaining table, mm -hmm. North Korea cheats on its deals, and China has a history of letting it do that. You know, we have right. to actually ask the question, is China fine with North Korea well, having nuclear weapons? They've let them develop the they, They've the allowed evidence. it. They may, in they fact, are. be fine. But here's the reality of it, Claudia. We yeah. also have allowed China, effectively, to cheat as well. Because you look at the trade scenario, look at the fact that they're stealing $600 billion worth of intellectual property from American companies every year. The fact that they jail yeah. a number of foreign executives, many American, on drummed up charges. All of these things, Claudia, are issues which we kind of looked the other way on for, for years. Yeah, it's called kicking the can down the road. And as a number of people have said, unfortunately, certainly with North Korea, we have really run out of road. They have abilities now that are very dangerous. This is a, a country practiced in nuclear extortion. They sell their wares. We should be very worried about Iran acquiring the same technology if it doesn't have it already from the North Koreans. And again, we go round and round in this merry-go-round. Sanctions, bargains, sanctions, negotiations. Neither of those, unfortunately, mm -hmm. is going to stop this. And Nobody wants a hot war. No. The question, no, the urgent that, question needs to be, how can we take down the North Korean regime, preferably without a hot war? Mm -hmm. And I would say attack the vulnerabilities of its brittle totalitarian system. So distrust between Kim and his lieutenants. There are things we could be doing no. that we're clearly not doing yeah. enough no, of. No, 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 no. But clearly. China. And by the way, I mean, yeah. you're talking about sanctions. You're talking about economic ways to go about this, talking about ways to get China to influence North Korea. All of this, to me, Claudia, looks like low-hanging fruit that nobody has bothered to touch. Yeah. Now you're seeing a little bit of a difference, a change in tone. President Trump coming out this afternoon and saying, look, enough is enough with China, and we need to start actually uh, enforcing uh, our free trade rules because we haven't seen free trade trade from China and it has cost Americans has it not I mean North Korea aside sure. it has cost Americans their livelihoods sure intellectual property does matter a very great deal enforcing it makes great sense uh, again I think in, in part this may be something of a lever to try and get China to cooperate and help with North Korea this may help on intellectual property but I think as a further lever to help with North Korea it's a lever, if you like, a bridge too far. It might make a difference for a short time. Mm -hmm. But this North Korean nuclear threat has been simmering for a quarter of a century. And we have been over and over. Politicians don't really want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. They find a way to muddle through and back away. Yeah, and you know depending what? on China right now, there's a lot right of interest in that. that. A lot of corporate interest in that. It, you know, China represents a very powerful, very dynamic market, and a lot of businesses want to be yeah. there, even if it's going to cost them in the way of losing sure. some intellectual property. They're making that gamble. They're, they're making that decision to be there, and they don't necessarily want the U.S. government interfering in all of this uh, in, in putting these restrictions on China. Uh, it's so good to see you. Thank you, Claudia, for being Great here. I, I want to turn to the market right now, which had a